Hi, today we've got one of these car diagnostic tools. This one is the Launch CRP123X, and this one is very much designed for the DIYer, and as such, it's extremely competitively priced. So this one is coming in at £132 delivered from Amazon.co.uk, but if you're in another part of the world, you can order it from the other Amazon storefronts, Amazon.com, etc., and have it delivered to your door from there. So this one is firmly designed for the DIYer, as I said. So as a result, it's a little bit more restricted in its functionality than some of the expensive units. Uh, and we're talking about the ability to only communicate with four modules on the CAN bus. So the ABS system, the SRS system, the ECU, and the automatic transmission control uh, unit. So those four units, but it does allow full uh, diagnostics with those. So reading codes, resetting uh, errors and also reading and plotting data streams and then we just got the three reset functions built in so the steering angle reset oil reset and also the throttle relearn it's got a five inch touch screen on the front here and the system is just running android 7 and it comes in this uh, tablet form factor which is quite rugged it feels quite comfortable to hold it's got kind of a soft touch on the outside here uh, and then we've got some uh, buttons on the side here but i've found when using it uh, most of the user interface can be controlled from the touchscreen itself. These are just if you'd rather click on some buttons to go through rather than scrolling through on the display. On the top side here, we've got a barrel jack for charging the internal battery. And then we've also got a D-sub connector, which then connects to this lead. So it's a hardwired connection to your OBD2 port. So you plug this in, plug this into the vehicle. And as soon as this is powered up, then it actually powers the um, unit itself, itself and charges the battery but if you do need to um, disconnect it from the vehicle for example if you want to take it somewhere else to read the data or take it to your computer or something like that then it runs from the internal battery and allows you to keep that diagnostic session going. The uh, barrel jack here is for charging the battery and it came with this USB to barrel jack connector but if you've got a 5 volt adapter with a 5.5 millimeter barrel jack you can just plug that in there. Power button on the top here, a couple of speakers on the back and that's about all there is here. No tilting bail or anything to hook over the steering wheel. Um, so a fairly bare bones unit. It comes with a carry case, which is nice. Um, so that's what we're talking about on here. And it does have free lifetime updates. So there's no subscription model with this unit. Uh, you power it up and you're able to uh, update it for the life of the unit. So that's the unit. I do actually have a vehicle, a Ford Focus with the engine management light on. So we're gonna try and diagnose that today and see if this tool can help us. Okay, so we're hooked up to the car's OBD2 port here. And this vehicle does actually have the engine management light on. This is a Ford Focus with the little one liter three cylinder EcoBoost engine. Let's see if we can find what's wrong with it. So we click on diagnose, and then you can see we can either do auto detect or we can pick the vehicle brand directly. Auto detects a little bit slower because it has to work out what communication protocol it, this vehicle uses. So it's a lot quicker just to go directly to Ford here and then press OK and it will work out what vehicle is connected so we can do an automatic search um, so we've got Ford Focus 2017 yes it's correct And then we can go to a health report. Let's find out what's wrong with the vehicle. So we've got two codes in the PCM related to the O2 sensor. So sensor two is the one after the catalytic converter. So we've got something wrong with that sensor. Let's have a look. So here are the codes in detail. And you can see we've got two codes here related to the O2 sensor. Now, because we've got two codes here, I am suspecting that the sensor is at fault rather than a problem with the catalytic converter because uh, we've got a fault for the heater circuit. And then if the sensor itself isn't able to heat up properly, then we're gonna get a fault with the readings from the sensor. So we've got a problem with the heater circuit. And then it's also saying the output is low. So that does make sense, but we will check the resistance of the heater in the engine bay in a moment. But we've got the details of the two error codes, and then we've got the snapshot data and the freeze frame data. So what this means is, if we click on one of these, you can see the conditions where the fault occurred which can be really useful for intermittent faults because you know something might only happen under very specific engine conditions and this captures all of the details for when that engine code appeared so that's all of the data there 
Let's have a quick look at the actual data streams. So this is quite similar to most of the other scan tools. The user interface is quite familiar here. We can read the data streams. And then let's see if we can find the output from the O2 sensor. Right, so we selected some data streams here for the second O2 sensor. Let's press OK on that and we can read the data streams in real time. So as you can see, we're commanding the heater to be turned on. It says there's an error. And then also, if you look here, there is no current being drawn by the heater on that second O2 sensor, which suggests that the heater has gone open circuit and therefore it's giving false readings, which is why we've got that second code. So that's really useful. Um, but I have noticed that there's a, a little bit of a vibration on the engine. Let's just double check some of the other data streams. Really, I think I'm probably just going to look at the fuel trims just to see if we've got a vacuum leak that's making it run a little bit rough. Okay, so I've selected the long and short term fuel trims and you can see they're just slightly positive here. The most likely situation here is we've got a little bit of a vacuum leak and we're getting some metered air, which means that we're adding about 2% more fuel than anticipated. There could be something else, but the way it's running suggests there is a very small vacuum leak. At 2%, it's probably not worth worrying about, but we might just hook up the smoke machine to the intake system and see if there's any holes or some leaks somewhere. Now, if you are interested, you can select multiple items from your data streams and actually plot those on a graph. Um, so you can see that happening there. And if I uh, press the accelerator a bit, you can see those acting in real time. So that's most of the functionality on the diagnosis. We can see we've got loads and loads of data streams on this car. Um, if we fix the fault, then we'll be able to clear the fault memory, but this is definitely a hard fault. And you can actually print off that health report. You can email it to you, or you can store it on the internal memory. Then we've got the generic OBD2 section here. So this will work out what vehicle's connected, but this will read any vehicle that supports the default OBD2 protocol. And we can go through, press enter, and again, we can read the fault codes. This is actually a lot quicker than going through the diagnosis section. Uh, but yeah, you can see here, we've definitely got a problem with that O2 sensor. Sometimes there is some live data here that you don't get in the other section and vice versa. Uh, but you can see here, we've got 37 data streams that we can read just with this generic OBD2. Uh, and then it's also got some of the readiness tests and that kind of stuff on here. Uh, we've also got some reset functions available, so the oil reset, steering angle sensor, and the throttle reeler, and we don't need to do any of those. Uh, but this one's a little bit more limited than some of the other scan tools. We've also got a plot of the battery voltage, so we can see it's charging quite happily here, uh, just over 14 volts. Here's the little one litre engine, and down at the bottom here is the O2 sensor that is likely causing us the problem. So the wire just goes up here and the connector is just behind the air intake. So since we've got to remove this, we may as well connect up the smoke machine and see if we've got any induction leaks anywhere uh, that we might be able to fix at the same time. Um, what I have noticed is there is a little bit of oil here on the rocker cover, which does suggest possibly there is a leak, which is why we're getting that slightly positive fuel trim. So we've got the smoke machine on and we've got the intake all bunged up. So let's connect up the tubes. And I can hear something from near the camshaft sensor just here. And yeah, the smoke's starting to come out. Let me see if I can see that a bit better. And it's a little difficult to see, but on the rocker cover, there is a separation just here where the smoke's coming out right next to the camshaft sensor. So it probably needs a new rocker cover, but for now I think we might just try using a bit of silicone just to um, seal that up. Right, so you might just be able to see down there, I've just smeared some black high temperature silicone. Here's the camshaft sensor which I've just temporarily unplugged and there's two vacuum lines and I've just ran some of that silicone along the crack, which will just help reduce the oil loss until we get a chance to replace the rocker cover. Right, so we've got the lead disconnected. That's just behind the intake, just down here. You have to reach under and release the connector. But we've got it connected in pin one and two, which is the white and red leads on the cable. 
and it's measuring open circuit. So I think that's at least one problem with the O2 sensor. So that warrants its replacement. Whether that will fix the other error code, we'll find out once we replace it and reset the codes. So there's the new O2 sensor, very simple to replace on this car, you just run the cable underneath. So uh, we'll just wait for the silicone to set on here so we're not sucking in bits of silicone into the engine and then we'll try starting the engine and we'll clear the codes and see if they come back. Right, so I think that silicone's had enough time to cure, so let's see if we can clear the error codes. and then we'll start the car. And the engine management light isn't illuminated at the moment. Let's have a look at the data streams. So it looks like it's done the job. Certainly it's saying no error for the heater control on that second sensor. And the fuel trims are starting to adjust. You can see 2.34 in the long term but the short term is slowly starting to adjust minus 2.34. It's just moving around a little bit, but it looks like after a bit of driving that will clear itself up and uh, those numbers will come down to about zero. So that's the launch CRP123X and not really too much to criticize on it. I think it seems like a pretty decent device. No problem diagnosing that for focus. So at this price point, I think it's a pretty good option for the Avid DIYer. If you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. I will put a link to this item in the description if you're interested in taking a look. But until next time, thanks for watching.